Chicago Cubs baseball is on the air. Cubs fans, I love you. Thank you for being here today. My name, my name is Pat Hughes of The Score, WSCR 670 AM, the flagship radio station of the Cubs network. And it is an absolute thrill to be here today. You are the best fans in the universe. Thank you. Did anybody go to work today? Did anybody go to school today? No worries, because your teachers and your bosses are all here too. We are gonna see all of your favorite Chicago Cubs here in just a few moments. Some other folks are gonna talk. Before we get underway, let me introduce my fellow Cubs broadcasters. My great partner on the score, Ron Coomer. From the television side, the excellent play-by-play -play man, Len Casper. And his partner, the talented Jim Deshays. Tell me, how does it feel to be a fan of a World Championship Chicago Cubs team? I want to mention four names, four people that are no longer here. I'm just going to mention their names and your reaction is entirely up to you. But I've been thinking a lot about them of late. First of all, the one and only Mr. Cub, Ernie Banks. And my partner on radio for the Cubs for 15 years, the legendary Ron Sano. This other guy got to broadcast a world championship team, but never with the Cubs. The one and only Harry Carey. And before him, a man that called thousands of Cubs games, Jack Brickhouse. The other night on the score, I had the rare privilege, something that I'll savor for the rest of my life. The last time the Cubs won the World Series, 1908. There was no baseball on the radio in 1908. That came along in the 1920s. So I had the chance to say, for the first time ever, as a broadcaster, the Chicago Cubs win the World Series. And that is something I will savor forever. And I think you will savor the moment that Chris Bryant Toss the ball to Anthony Rizzo at first base. You will remember where you were at that moment for the rest of your lives. Let's begin today's rally the way we begin ball games at Wrigley Field. It's time for the national anthem, and here is the incomparable Wayne Mesmer.
Again, that was the great Wayne Mesmer, thanks to Wayne. The Cubs are owned by the Ricketts family. They have been the owners since late in the 2009 calendar year. It took them seven years to win a World Series, which they said was their objective right from day one. Let's welcome the Ricketts family, Laura and Todd, and the chairman of the Cubs, Tom Ricketts, and they're gonna say a few words, Tom. You know, I've said for seven years, I have the most unique job in the world. Because almost every single day, a complete stranger comes up to me. And they always say the same thing. They say, Mr. Ricketts, I'm 71 years old. Please win the World Series before I die. Now, I normally say something like, OK, do you eat right? Do you take care of yourself? Do you exercise? How much time do I have? Well. For the thousands of people who have said that to me and are still with us, there you go. But you don't win the World Series on accident. You win the World Series because you have great people all working together to achieve a goal. And today we're gonna to recognize many of those people, but first of all, I'd like to congratulate the guys on the field. They're great people and great players, and you'll have a chance to see them later. When I used to go to the minor league clubhouses a few years ago, I would tell people that the men who were on the field when the Cubs win the World Series will not just be Chicago baseball players, but they are gonna be Chicago baseball legends. And those Chicago baseball legends were led by a new Chicago baseball legend in his own right, our great manager, Joe Madden, and his incredible coaching staff. But those guys don't come together on accident. They have to be brought here. They have to be looked for. They have to be scouted. They have to be developed. They have to be found. They have to be signed. And that is the Department of Baseball Operations. And so, I'm not sure what else anyone could possibly say about the great work of Theo Epstein, Jed Hoyer, and everyone on his team. But the baseball operation guys don't get very far unless we have an organization that is supporting them. And the leader of that organization is Crane Kenny. And the superlative staff that he has has helped improve the ballpark, improve the field, improve the neighborhood, and improve the team overall so we can put together the best team and best organization in all of sports. So I'm gonna finish with a trivia question. I just yell out the answer if you know it. How long has it been since the Cubs have won the World Series? The answer is zero years since the Cubs have won the World Series. Thank you. Tom mentioned the name Crane Kenny, president of business operations of the Chicago Cubs. Crane, very instrumental in the Ricketts family gaining ownership back when they did. He also was the leader in going and acquiring Theo Epstein to run the baseball operations. Crane has been with the team for 23 years, longer than anyone that you're gonna hear speak today. So please, a nice warm welcome for Crane Kenny. I think we made history twice, Pat. Um, we're now the World Series champions. And I think you just got them to give a round of applause to a business geek. So thank you. Uh, hey, I want to say um, just a couple words, Start, starting with Pat. I said, um, my summers are made when I'm driving home from the ballpark and I hear Pat say, the final score, the Chicago Cubs three, the St. Louis Cardinals one. So, so good night from beautiful and historic Wrigley Field. So Pat, thank you for everything you do. 
Um, obviously, this happens because of the players. We never forget uh, why we're here. We have a group of players, as they say, that never quit. They never gave up. They believed, and they're champions. So one round of applause for those guys who really made this happen. Our baseball leadership is the best in the country. It is the best in the game. It starts with uh, Theo, Jed, Jason, and his old, their whole team. We are so lucky that we convinced Theo to leave his hometown after doing everything that could be done there. Uh, he wanted one more mountain to climb. We're so happy he stopped in Chicago on his way to Cooperstown. Thanks, Theo Epstein, and thank you to the Baseball Operations Group. You know, Tom mentioned uh, our team on the business side. We have a saying, we want to be the best in the game, both on and off the field. They proved they are the best in the game, off the field. I couldn't be any luckier to work with a talented group of folks that make Tom and I look good every day. Thank you to the business ops team, and thank you to our corporate partners. I have to say, in particular, beside our legacy partners, American Airlines sponsored today's parade. They sponsored this event. American, thank you so much. And thank you to Under Armour, Kevin Plank and his group. They were our first big sponsor inside Wrigley Field. All of the gear we're wearing today comes from Under Armour. Thank you to them. And I, and I have to say this, uh, they don't really want to be recognized today, but I want to say about the city. Um, our great city, this beautiful day, that ballpark, so much has gone into changing what's happening up at the corner of Clark and Addison. The last four years, our mayor and his team have done everything they could to make it possible. The police, the fire, EMTs that were all on staff today, they made today happen. Thank you to the police department, fire, and first responders. Um, I also want to say uh, thank you to our alumni. You know, uh, great having uh, Rhino come home. Um, Thank you. Great heaven, Demp and Carrie Wood never leave. And, and great to have uh, Billy Williams with us. Billy, Billy's flag flies on the right field pole. His statue graces the entrance to our building. His plaque is in Cooperstown. Most importantly, Billy is the connection to our past. We love you, Billy. And my last thank you before I get out of the way here is, is for a group of people who joined us just seven years ago. A group of Midwesterners who bought this club in 2009. And you know, there's a saying in business that culture eats strategy for breakfast. And there were a lot of strategies over the years. But we proved that the culture matters most. The Ricketts family brought a new culture to this organization when they joined us. All of them, Tom, Pete, Laura, and Todd, their, their father, Joe, and, and their mother, Marlene, they told us to think big. They told us to stop cutting corners. They said, hire the best. They said, build the best. Don't settle for second. No one has a time clock on you. Do it right and do it always. They changed our culture. I want to give a round of applause to the Ricketts family for doing what they did. Thanks, Crane. Let's go ahead and uh, welcome a couple of living legends. Crane mentioned them both, but now we're going to see them. First of all, a big hand for Ryan Sandberg. And now a great welcome for the one and only Billy Williams.
he can still lash up about three line drives and five out of bats. Let's meet a couple of the guys in the baseball operations. They have done a fantastic job in building this world championship team. A nice warm welcome for general manager Jed Hoyer. Vice President Jason McLeod. Combining what he did in Boston with the Cubs in wiping out championship droughts, you're talking about 194 years between the two towns. A great welcome for not only one of the best current executives in the game, but one of the best who has ever lived, Theo Epstein. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Chicago. That parade was insane. You guys are ridiculous. Thank you. On behalf of everyone in baseball operations, Jed, Jason, all our scouts, all our development people, all the guys behind the scenes I'm lucky enough to work with day in and day out, I just want to say thank you to the fans. 108 years, ridiculous, 108 years of support, patience, love for this team, waiting for what happened two nights ago in Cleveland. I've been here for five years in particular, and, and we've asked a lot of you and we put you through a lot over the last five years. 101 losses, trading players you've come to, to know and love for guys you've never heard of, trading 40% of the rotation three years in a row, asking you guys to follow the draft and follow the minor leagues. Let's be honest, for a while there, we forgot the not in try not to suck. But you stayed with us. In the first year, I remember running into an elderly woman outside Wrigley one day, leaving the game. She introduced herself, told me, she's like, I'm 83 years old. I, I really want to live to see a World Series. Is it going to happen? And we had just lost like 10 to 1, five game losing streak. It was pretty bad. All I could think, I looked at her, and all I could think of to say was, take your vitamins. But deep down, I know she made it. She's out there somewhere, and you guys made it. So thank you for everything that you've given us, and the players, and the team, all the support, all the patience. It means the world to us. And really, that, that's what's made it such an emotional month. You know, our players felt it, felt how badly you guys wanted it, driving around town, seeing all the W flags, seeing you guys sharing this with your parents and your grandparents, all those who didn't quite make it all the way here, how badly you wanted not just to get there, but to win the World Series. And it was incredibly emotional for everybody. And our players really felt it and dug deep for you. I think you know, one thing that's been proven true over time and in baseball and in life is that human beings can accomplish more for others and for the group than they can for themselves. And I think. You guys are really what carried our guys through all October. And those big moments, we're down three runs in the ninth inning in game four to San Francisco. They came back for each other and for you guys. Down, down a game to the Dodgers, won three in a row. We hadn't hit in two days. Zobris lays down that bunt, and then we go off. That was for you guys and for each other. And then the biggest one of all, after Cleveland comes back on us three runs, our players during that rain delay. Thank you, thank you, Ernie, thank you, Ronnie, for that rain. I was walking down in the clubhouse and I saw all our players, gathered, all 25 guys, gathered, huddled together, shoulder to shoulder in the weight room. And instead of lamenting what had happened and blowing the lead, they were picking each other up. We got you, we got this, let's keep grinding. We're the best team in baseball. We're gonna win this game. We're gonna win it for each other. 
We're gonna win it for the fans. Let's go do this right now. And as soon as I, I, I overheard that, I stopped for a minute. I said, we're gonna win this game. And the next thing you know, Schwarber single, bang, we're off and going, two runs, and they did it for you guys and for each other. And that's what makes it so special. So, this is, we've all dreamed of this so many times over the years, and this has exceeded all our wildest dreams. So, from everybody, from the Ricketts family and everything they've done to create a family atmosphere, the players, the staff, all the scouts, development, front office people you don't get to see, Thank you and congrats, you guys are world champs. And now, my final responsibility, and then I can go back to that little bender I'm in progress on. I get to introduce the man and the trophy. So, this gentleman was really the finishing piece for us. Uh, you know, the Ricketts really started to change the whole culture in the organization, and then all the young talent we had, morale started to be great, but we couldn't quite figure out how to get that kind of morale at the big league level. And then this guy became a free agent two years ago. I think he crushed a shot and a beer at his opening press conference. I knew we were in good shape at that point. He's done simple better. He's embraced his target. He has not allowed the pressure to exceed the pleasure. He has tried and managed not to suck. Please welcome Joe Madden and your championship trophy. the Cub Stock 2016. Look at this thing. I wasn't there in 69, but I wish Richie Havens was here today, man. That'd be outstanding. Uh, listen, this is overwhelming. Uh, on the drive, uh, Wrigleyville down through Michigan to here. Uh, the one thing that really came to my mind, uh, first and foremost, is that we've known each other forever. You guys are the best. Congratulations. Uh, to go through the entire litany, uh, if you permit me for just a moment. Uh, first of all, where's Jay? Where's my beautiful wife, Jay? Where's Jay? Hold your hand up, baby. She's right here. Give Jay a nice round of applause. Way over my skis, I know that. That's the way it's supposed to be when you're a major league manager. Thank you, honey. Okay, just briefly, like I said, okay. First of all, and you've got to indulge me for a moment, to the Ricketts family, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, for Theo and Jed to take that trip down to uh, Navarro Beach several years ago in uh, the Cousin Eddie parked right there on the beach, had a great conversation in the back on his really pocket of sand and uh, invited me to come up here to uh, partake in this experience. Uh, I knew just uh, from a distance I'd only been here one other time uh, and worked at Wrigley Field, uh, but to give me this opportunity, to give my family this opportunity to participate and eventually be part of this. I can't thank them enough, uh, Theo and Jed. Thank you so much. Okay, and, and also thanks to be, uh, Theo's beautiful wife, Marie. Where's Marie? Because I just showed him up. Not my intention. Um, okay, and now listen, you have to understand where I came from. I am a baseball grunt. I started in scouting and development. I was a uh, minor league manager in 1981 in Idaho Falls, Idaho, and I was a, uh, a scout, an area scout. So, okay, everybody loves what we've done. Everybody loves this group of players, but you have to understand, you're seeing the finished product. The people that really put this together, they'll get any kind of uh, recognition or applause or appreciation, but I understand what they do. So, uh, please, would you recognize the scouts that have brought these guys together in our player developmental department, because they're really the lifeblood of the organization. Next level. Um, 
I, I also had been a uh, coach on a, a bunch of different levels, a major league coach also. And again, these guys don't get nearly enough credit. I show up late. I get there as late as I possibly can. I, I get my coffee in the morning. I get my iPad out. I write out the lineup. And while I'm doing that, a bunch of coaches are already at the ballpark. And they're putting all this stuff down on a piece of paper, getting everybody organized and, and really putting the game plan together. I stand in the corner of the dugout and try not to screw it up as much as I possibly can. So please understand, I would love for you to recognize the best coaching staff in all of Major League Baseball. Where are those boys? Okay, they're still backstage, but they're going to be up here any moment. Come on up, guys. Henry Block, well, come on up, come on up, come on up, please. Please. Coach Noble is also um, auditioning for the Chippendale dance crew. You got him on? No, okay. No, on. Okay. okay. So you're gonna, ladies, you're gonna miss that one. Um, and of course, and of course, uh, never be deceived. Never be deceived, please. Um, this is a player's game. It's all about the players. Uh, you know, you read stuff, you watch TV, all these different things, and there's always the controversy that's created, the dialogue, the narrative, whatever you want to call it. It's necessary, and that's why we're all out here today. I was a big fan, too. I used to hang out in bar rooms and drink some beers and talk uh, different stuff about baseball, football, basketball, et cetera. It's all necessary. But at the end of the day, 40-some thousand people, whatever, and you got baseball players, guys, that are able to process the moment, stay in the moment, and are able to move on from a negative situation to a positive one, like we did the other day. How about the difference in the weather? I mean, look at this today. This is unbelievable. The other night, okay, we're, we're out there, and we have the most beautiful weather, and then all of a sudden, it is the worst weather, but it was absolutely necessary in the moment, and our guys got together, we composed ourselves, and came back out, and we're able to do what we did, and now we're all standing here today. So never be deceived about this. It is a player's game, and they're all going to be up here in a minute, but for me, from the bottom of my heart, the coaching staff, everybody up here, congratulations to the 2016 Chicago Cubs players. That's it. I mean, I don't want to stand here and waste your time and, and take up too much of it. But listen, um, this is uh, an incredible moment for all of us. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I mean, I, I've been around baseball for a bit. Never, never have I experienced anything like Wrigley Field on a nightly basis. Never have I experienced anything like the conversation among all of you when I run into you on the street. It's, um, it's different. It's spectacular. It's comfortable. It's warm. And it's the way it should be. So I want to congratulate you, the fans, also, and thank you for being so patient. I'm going to move it along. Um, again, um, let's hope that it's not another 108 years. Let's, let's see if we can repeat this and come back next year. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Joe brought the coaches out. Let's go ahead and identify them, okay? If you guys could just kind of wave as your name is announced, that would probably work. Please still say hello to Henry Blanco. Mike Borzello. Pitching coach Chris Bazio. Franklin Font. Eric Hinsky. First base coach Brandon Hyde. Third base coach, Gary Jones. Hitting coach, John Maley. Dave Martinez. Chad Noble. And Lester Strode. Nice big hand for all of these great guys. Are you ready to see the players? Now I'm going to introduce them individually, 
You can make as, no as much noise as you want, okay? So let her rip. Some of these guys are going to speak a few words, and some will not. Please say hello to Albert Almora, Jr. The Cy Young winner of 2015, Jake Arrieta. The co-MVP of the National League Championship Series, Javier Baez. National League MVP candidate, Chris Bryant. Pitcher Trevor Cahill. Pitcher Arolas Chapman. Chris Coughlin. Catcher Wilson Contreras. Pitcher Carl Edwards Jr. And now to speak a few words, he led off game seven of the World Series with a home run, Dexter Fowler. I guess I'm the first one on the mic. It's nothing new. You know what they say? They say, you go, we go. So I'm going. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you, Cubs, for, thank you, Cubs fans, for coming out. Y'all are the best in the, in the world. Um, thank you for having me. Y'all are like family. Y'all are extended family to me, and I love y'all forever. Go Cubs. A nice welcome for pitcher Justin Grimm. Starting pitcher Jason Hamill. This guy led the big leagues in earned run average. He was the winning pitcher in the pennant clinching game. He pitched great in game seven, Kyle Hendricks. Outfielder Jason Hayward. Infielder Tommy LaStella. Pitcher John Lackey. Cy Young candidate. 19 game winner, winner of game five in both the league championship series and the world series, John Lester. How about this shit? Sorry kids. One more time, this is, uh, Really, the only thing I want to say is one more time for David Ross. I love you, buddy. Woody, keep your shirt on. Thanks, man. This guy hit the most famous Grand Slam in Cubs history. He's going to say a few words. Miguel Montero. This guy had the save in game seven of the World Series, Mike Montgomery. Pitcher Hector Rondon. 
A big welcome to a blossoming superstar, Addison Russell. This young guy is going to say a few words. He is quickly becoming a legend. Kyle Schwarber. Yeah, Chicago. All right. Uh, I want to thank everyone out here. Um, it was a crazy year for me. Uh, the, you guys kept me going through the rehab. All the credit goes to my teammates. They, they pushed me through it. Uh, they, <laughs> they got to the World Series, and for me to be able to contribute, it was awesome. I love you guys. We're world champs. Let's do it again next year. Nice welcome for pitcher Joe Smith. Outfielder Jorge Soler. Pitcher Pedro Strope. Outfielder Matt Caesar. Pitcher Travis Wood. Pitcher Rob Zestrisny. And this next gentleman wants to say a few words. World Series MVP Ben Zobrist. Wow, it's unbelievable. I can't believe this. You know what, uh, I got, I'm holding this thing. This game makes a lot of individual awards, but uh, this, is, this is definitely a team award for this team. This is a team full of MVPs, and we're in a city of MVPs. Look, I've been blessed far more than I ever deserved or expected in this game. God has given a lot to me, and I'm so thankful for that. He gave me the opportunity to hold a trophy just like that last year and hoist it up. And I thought, how can I ever top this? And then I started thinking about Chicago. I started thinking about Wrigley Field. 108 years, and I said, I want to be part of that. So I literally, I promise you, I prayed during free agency last year to be a Chicago Cub. Thankfully, God and the Cubs, thank you, Theo, made it happen. And I embarked on a journey with these guys to bring this elusive championship to the north side. A lot of expectations this year. These guys met every one of them. We all year long battled together, and we had it. We knew we had it until we were down 3-1 in the World Series. It was silent in that clubhouse, let me tell you. And then the man, the myth, the legend, David Ross spoke up. He said, no, don't do that. Don't hang your heads. He said, we're the best team. He said, we've come back. We've won three games in a row a lot this year, and we're going to do it. He said, one pitch, one inning at a time. And then. The next day, 
the Italian stallion, our own Italian stallion, Anthony Rizzo. The heart and soul of this club played Rocky movies all day long in the clubhouse. Rocky quotes. And now, I'm a small town Illinois kid, grew up downstate, but I used to watch Rocky movies to be inspired before my games when I was a kid. So you better believe when he started that stuff up, I was all about it. And I was pumped up. And, sh and sure enough, I tell you what, this team, this team answered the bell. Games five, six, and seven, it was like a heavyweight fight. And this, this ball club pulled through for all of you. Thank you so much, Chicago, for this opportunity. Thank you so much. This is your team. Thank you. I mentioned Chris Bryant's an MVP candidate. Likewise, this next guy is not only an MVP candidate, but he's a team leader. We have seen him become a superstar right before our eyes. Big welcome, he's gonna speak, Anthony Rizzo. Woo! It happened, baby. It happened. Um, real quick, there's a lot of people that obviously are on this stage, but there's a lot of people that aren't from top to bottom, from the Dominican Republic to Tom Ricketts, everyone in between, all the minor league coaches that have put in the work for this uh, that aren't getting recognized. We thank them, we thank our entire organization, our medical staff, everyone. Um, two guys I want to single out real quick is uh, VJ, our traveling secretary. Is, is the absolute man. He, he's the reason why we can do anything is possible through him. And uh, another guy that I don't think is up here is our strength coach, Tim Buss. Um, he, he really he keeps us going every day. It's such a grind. And uh, Tim Buss is, is every single day coming in and, and, and getting us going. And as you can see, th these guys mean so much to this team that really no one knows about. And uh, all the scouting people, all the directors, thank you. But th these two guys mean so much to our team, and they, they don't get credit. And what better way to do it in front of five million people? So uh, also, uh, real quick, for, for every, I feel, I feel like I was here. I was here during the bad times, and I got so much into the culture of the Chicago Cubs that every single person that has worn this jersey I feel like won the World Series with us today, or the other day. Dempster, Kerry Wood, um, Ernie Banks, who, who is looking down, smiling so, so bright right now. Um, Billy Williams, Ronnie Sano, it's just every single player that's still living too has, has been a big reason we're here and a big part of this and we thank them. And uh, the last guy, well, two more. Uh, the families, the wives, the girlfriends, uh, all the parents that are here, the sacrifice that they make for us uh, all the time is unbelievable. We're, 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 our schedules are so demanding, and uh, without them supporting us, we're not standing here. Uh, and uh, last, lastly, I, before I introduce him, I want to say a few words about him. Uh, the grandpa. He. Uh, Gramps and I sat down a few years ago uh, in an off season before his last year with Boston, he was a free agent. And we just talked and uh, I, we have the same agency and we're talking and I, and I say to my agent, I go, man, this is exactly what the Chicago Cubs need. He is exactly what we need to bring everything together. And obviously a lot of pieces came through with that, but he taught myself personally how to, how to become a real winner. And Woo! He's like a, he's like a brother to me. He's taught me how to be. 
He's taught me a lot in life, on the field, off the field, how to be a better person. Uh, for, I'm forever grateful for him. And uh, he's going out a champion forever. For the rest of his life, he could say the last game he played in, he's a world champion. Uh, let's bring up David Ross. Chicago! Look what the boys got me! I owe a lot to these guys. I just, I'm gonna be quick. I wanna thank my family, my, my wife, Hyla, my kids, Landry Cole, Harper, my mom and dad, and this group right behind me. Thank you guys. Wait, wait, how about a quick selfie? Chicago, thank you, thank you fans. All right, one, one last thing. Um, I got a text message from my friend yesterday that there's a piece of history that's going for up towards the to $3 million and that's the last out of the World Series. The baseball. Well. Mike Montgomery's first professional save ever in his life was game seven of the World Series for us to win it. And everyone came here to do one thing and that's win the World Series. And uh, the man that really made that happen is our owner, Mr. Tom Ricketts. And he sacrificed everything for the Chicago Cubs and for this city. And it only feels right for me to hand this ball over to Mr. Ricketts because this is part of history forever. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, I want to introduce, we got a little song to sing. We're going to sing up here, the boys. I want to introduce a lifelong coach fan, a friend of mine, and an amazing country singer. Give it up for Brett Eldridge. All right, so I, I grew up a huge Cub fan just like you all. If I wasn't a singer, I'd be right out there in the crowd with you. So, I've gone to so many games at Wrigley and heard people sing this song really loud. But I want this to be the loudest Go Cubs Go has ever been sang right here in Chicago. With the help of my boys back here, y'all ready to sing? Here we go. Baseball season's underway. And you're ready for a brand new day. Hey, Chicago, what do you say? The Cubs are gonna win today. And they're singing, go Cubs, go. Go Cubs, go. Hey, Chicago, what do you say? The Cubs are gonna win today. Go Cubs, go. The speed yeah. to be the best in the national league. He said, Well, this is our year, and the Cubs are real. Oh, so come on down to Wrigley Field, and we'll sing it. Go Cubs, go! Go Cubs, go! Hey, Chicago, what do you say? The Cubs are gonna win today. Go Cubs, go! Go Cubs, go! Chicago, what do you say? The Cubs are gonna win today. Baseball 
time is here again. Yes, it is. Come on. Hey! You can catch it all on WGN. Also, stamp your feet and clap your hands. Chicago Cubs got the greatest fans. Go, 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 go. 